Hello, welcome to ISC. My name is Kevin Kissel. I'm with Google Cloud CTO's office, and we'd like to talk about some of the things that Google Cloud is doing for HPC this year. We've done a lot of excellent and exciting work in the past year in Google Cloud for the HPC market. We've upgraded the CPUs. We are the first cloud provider to offer the Cascade Lake processor, and we're offering it in a SKU that allows us to have 3.8 gigahertz frequencies on all core turbo, a significant upgrade, and the first Cascade Lakes available from a major cloud supplier. We now have T4 GPUs available worldwide, an extremely powerful, extremely cost-effective GPU for machine learning and for general physical computation. On the networking side, we now have 32 gigabit communication, node to node, which is doubling what we've managed to do before. And that brings down our MPI latencies and increases the throughput for parallel computations dramatically. And for storage, we've partnered with DDN and we've built a Lustre file system as a service that uh, managed to break into the, IO, the top 10 of the IO 500 at supercomputing last year. As I'm sure you know, Google invented and made public, open source, the Kubernetes system for orchestrating containers. And this is a refinement, it's a simplification of the systems we've been using internally at Google for many years. And this makes cluster computing in general far easier for many applications. And on the HPC front, there was a really dramatic demonstration in Barcelona only a couple weeks ago at the Kubernetes conference where a couple of researchers from CERN working with Google were able to reproduce the discovery of the Higgs boson that was done at CERN computationally analyzing data. They took the public data set and in the Google Cloud, somebody could have done this from a laptop, and indeed they did it from a laptop at the conference in real time, repeated that computation of the Higgs boson in a matter of minutes, live on stage. And that's pretty exciting, but beyond our managed Kubernetes service that was used there, we're introducing Anthos, which is a way of federating a hybrid cloud of Kubernetes. So we can manage resources within Google, as we've always done, and we can extend the reach of our managed Kubernetes system into processors that are on the customer site so that people can keep their data locally, people can use more specialized processors if they need to, all of this being orchestrated by the Google Cloud Management System. So we have several interesting demonstrations going on here on the booth during the show. Uh, there is MiniGo, which is a demonstration of Google's Cloud AI playing a game of Go against visitors. We have a demonstration of how it's possible using Elastifile and Slurm to spin up collections of thousands of nodes to run parallel jobs in a matter of minutes, spin it up, spin it down. The user only pays for what resources are actually used. And we have a very interesting demo of the use of cloud GPUs where we have a collection of 18 nodes, each of which has eight GPUs on it, all working in concert, doing a graphical simulation of the collision of two supernovas. So on the booth today, uh, we have one of our TPU V3s just on exposition. Uh, this is our third generation tensor processing unit. It's an AI accelerator that is, uh, in, by many metrics, the most powerful in the world. Uh, we have uh, Code Labs, which we find to be a really useful way to get people to know the cloud. There's a lot of concern, how do I use the cloud? Well, it's actually really, really simple. And people can drop in, spend just a few minutes, familiarize themselves with the interface, learn how easy it is, take that knowledge home with them. Because you can do supercomputing, app, supercomputing applications from anywhere, from a laptop, from a, a tablet, from a Chromebook, based on the cloud infrastructure and the interfaces that we provide. Thank you very much for your time and hope to see you at ISC next year.